morning and welcome to Grace's Sunday morning Zoom service. Please see today's newsletter for information regarding upcoming Sunday morning services, as well as for information about a Zoom session tomorrow night at 7 o'clock with Richard Martins and Ed Wilms about our participation in the MB conference. There are also several prayer requests in the newsletter. Please remember to keep these members in your thoughts and prayers. We live in a world filled with uncertainty, hopelessness, loneliness, fear, and despair. There are times when we may feel that there is nobody there for us, nobody who truly cares about us and about what we need. We may feel like we're the only ones who are experiencing tough times and that we're all alone in our struggles. And that's even without a global pandemic. Psalm 23 reminds us that as Christians, we have the ultimate caregiver, someone who is always looking out for us, who will always be with us and give us what we need, even when we feel we are lost or abandoned by the rest of the world. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Familiar words which bring comfort to many. Not surprisingly, there are many songs based on this much loved psalm. One song by Joshua Sherman, simply entitled Psalm 23, I Am Not Alone, clearly speaks to the power of God's care and love for us in a world where we may feel lonely, lost, scared, or lacking. The words of the song are a wonderful reminder that God is there for us and that he cares for us, even when we feel afraid and completely alone. The song says, the Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me defender behind me, I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing, my cup's overflowing, no weapon can harm me, I won't fear. He always guides me through mountains and valleys, his joy is refreshing, restores my soul. Mercy and goodness give me assurance that I'll see his glory face to face. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Hallelujah, I am not alone. He's my comfort, always holds me close. The words of the chorus are simple but powerful. Hallelujah, we are not alone. God is always there to comfort us and to hold us, even when we feel like the whole world is against us and nothing will ever be right again. Isn't it nice to know that in this topsy-turvy world, there is always someone that we can trust to care for us, no matter how lonely, lost, or scared we are. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, in this world, there is so much hurt and so much confusion that it's easy for people to feel lost, unloved, alone, and afraid. Help them to remember the words of Psalm 23 and to remember that you are always looking out for them and caring for them with your perfect love no matter what their circumstance. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Now is our time for uh, prayer for those concerns of the congregation. We just uh, hope that you remember to pray for those in uh, mentioned in the news newsletter that are dealing with uh, health and other issues. This morning, I was especially like to keep in mind the issues and the humanitarian crisis in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. MCC is reporting that there's over 4 million people dealing with hunger and 2 million people homeless. And there are many of our friends and neighbors in this community who have loved ones over there that are in the middle of this. And we just must continue to pray for these people and uh, support MCC in, uh, in uh, financially so that they can carry out their relief efforts. We go to a time of prayer now and after that Gavin will play a uh, offertory uh, to Lord, we just thank you for uh, all that you give us. You are almighty, sovereign, holy God. Worthy of all glory and honor and praise. We thank you for your mercy, for your love, for your grace. We thank you for this forgiveness of sins for the, through the cross of our Lady, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray that you will guide us in your will, help us individually and as a congregation to move in the way that you want us to, to serve in the way that you want us to, led by your Spirit open to your guiding hand, being obedient to your will. Lord, we pray for those in our congregation that are dealing with health issues. Often we don't understand why things happen the way they do, but we have a God that promises to help us through the trials and troubles we face. Pray for those that are dealing with cancer and cancer treatments, Parkinson's and dementia, those that are taking care of loved ones. Lord, we pray that you will give comfort and strength to each one of them, helping them through the, the ordeals they are going through. We pray that we also can be comfort to them as a congregation individually, supporting them. Lord, we pray for the people in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. We pray that they will get the relief, the support they need. We're thankful that uh, there has been a reduction in the, the war and the violence that is happening there. We just pray for these people as they try to rebuild their lives. We pray that uh, we will be generous in giving to, to them and that uh, your uh, Blessing will be on them and also on those here in our region that uh, have loved ones there. Give them comfort also. Lord, we thank you for all that you give us and we just pray that you will accept our gifts, our offerings, of our time, our money, our talents. And I pray that they will be accepted to you. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
a song for you guys today. It's called Our God is a Great Big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. He's higher than the skyscraper and deeper than the submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dream. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. He's higher than the skyscraper and deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. And he holds us in his hand. And he holds us in his hand. Good morning. I will be reading Psalm 23. It's a psalm written by David, the shepherd who became king. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Good morning, Grace. Uh, I am uh, up north right now, and so my internet connection was a little... Uh, 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 I was running into a couple of difficulties. I tested it last night and it didn't work this morning. So I'm over at a neighbor's, uh, but I'm glad we're, uh, we're good to go. I just want to say that uh, once again, it's a privilege to be able to share with you and to be with you. And uh, I'm looking forward to a time when this COVID season is through and we're able to gather together again physically to see many of you in person. Uh, this morning, we're going to look at Psalm 23 and I just want to pray together with you and ask that God would speak to us during this time together. So let's uh, pray and talk with God. Heavenly Father, thank you for this window of time right now. We can gather as your children, as believers. We set aside this specific time to worship you and to hear your voice. And I pray God that you would speak to us this morning through your word. Thank you that your word is living and it's active. And I know you have a word for each of us this morning. And so we ask that you would speak to us in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Books, books, and books. As you know, libraries are bursting with books. Shelves in bookstores sag because of an oversupply of books. Students' arms for years have been accustomed to carrying books. 
Uh, we now have digital books where we can get them on a Amazon and Kindle readers, read them digitally. And authors keep writing them, publishing houses keep publishing books, people keep buying books, books, books and more books. But did you ever stop to think that when all of life comes crashing through and dreams are shattered and when tears begin to flow, when a group of people are gathered maybe in a quiet cemetery under a tent, that there's only really one book, one book that matters anymore. And that's the book, God's book, God's word, the Bible. And this morning I wanna go even one step further and say that, you know, in times of pain and times of sorrow and suffering and bereavement, almost without exception, the officiating pastor will turn to one famous chapter in that one famous book. And they'll read it in its entirety. And as you well know that uh, this chapter has been recited in worship, it's been memorized and rec recited in the midst of upheavals and persecution, earthquakes and disasters. Whenever words fail for us to process pain, uh, we remember this one chapter. It's a short poem that's endured through the centuries and it's been recognized as one of the greatest literary achievements of mankind, cherished universe for over 3000 years. And it's the 23rd Psalm. Uh, it doesn't matter who's, who's died, a laborer or a prime minister or a president, president or a bus driver or a mother or whatever, a, a caretaker or janitor. The passage that's called into service more often than not is this Psalm, Psalm 23. And I'm going to divide it this morning uh, into three parts. The first part speaks about God's uh, provision for us. The second part speaks about God's protection. And the third part of the psalm speaks about God's promises. God's provision, God's protection, and God's promises. And I know it was just read uh, to us. I'm going to read it one more time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to ask you, what is it that makes this psalm so special? How it reaches deep into the souls in its simplicity and it connects with us and we just we can't help but respond to it there's something in the very depths of our being that this psalm stirs uh, in us and let's explore a bit of that together this morning briefly um, the Lord is my shepherd this psalm is essentially about two people there's God and there's David. And the main declaration David makes in this psalm is, the Lord is my shepherd. And uh, this isn't a prayer. David's not talking to God. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. The first thing he wants us to know is he just comes right out and he says, I want you to know the Lord is my shepherd. He's not a shepherd. He's not the shepherd or even our shepherd. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And that's personal. 
that personal uh, possessive pronoun makes a world of difference because it makes a difference if you go by and you say, well, this is, this is a house, or you can say, this is my house. It makes a difference if you can say, well, this is a wife or a husband, or if you say, this is my wife or my spouse. That personal possessive pronoun indicates that there's identity, that you're talking about somebody, you're talking about something that is a part of you, that has become a part of your existence. It's essential to you. It's not a casual relationship anymore, but there's this commitment, there's this intimacy, there's this access, and there's this sharing. And that's the first thing that I noticed. Dave is telling us that between God and him, there's this secret connection. He's not just God. He's not even almighty God or even uh, our God. David says he's my God. And that's beautiful. Listen to some of the things, if you look at the psalm, that the shepherd provides for those who have a secret connection, intimate connection with him. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. It's not everything that I might want, but I have everything that I need. He provides a spirit of contentment, deep satisfaction. Do you have it? It's been provided for us. Friends, when you enter into a relationship, when we enter into a relationship with God through Christ, we have it all. Every major league issue or concern in your life has been settled. Every major league question has been answered. I mean, who you are, you're a child of God. Where are you from? You're not an accident, but you were willed into existence by a loving God and creator. What to do with your life? What guidelines to fall? And, and where are you going to be when you die? An eternal heavenly place prepared for you and for me. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I want, a spirit of contentment. So we go on. Another thing the shepherd provides, uh, not just a spirit of contentment, but of restoration for your soul. You know, there isn't a, a week that goes by where you and I don't hear about hardship after hardship, disaster after disaster, blow after blow in people's lives. Stories about how lives have been damaged or ravaged. Sometimes it's when, uh, you know, maybe a husband uh, left. Um, Sometimes it's a pink slip at work after working with a company for 15, 20 years and it goes under or they have to cut back on staff. Sometimes um, it might be getting a word, a message that, you know, a loved one has got cancer or got something like this or someone's lost a loved one. And there's, there's so many things that come into our lives that end up damaging our, our hearts and our souls and wounding them. And I love how in verse three here, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I want. And then he goes on to say, he restores my soul. You know what David's saying there? He's saying, you know, uh, we are more than just a physical being. God moves toward you. And he says, I know what your soul needs. Your soul needs love. Your soul needs security. Your soul needs acceptance. Your soul needs strength. And I can give it to you if you open up your heart to me. Uh, of course, you know, if, uh, if you have a problem with your car, your mechanic can fix it. If you have a problem with your bathroom sink, you can call a plumber and the plumber will sink, uh, fi fix it. If you have a problem with a physical scar, a plastic surgeon can fix it. But if you have a problem with a damaged soul, there's no human being that can fix that, is there? Only God. Only God can heal a damaged soul. God can restore our inner person completely, David says. Restores my soul. He can use other people in the process sometimes to help out, but in the final analysis, 
He's the sole doctor. And David says, he's done that for me. He's restored my soul. Friends, there's no crisis. There's no tragedy. There's no accident. There's no injury. There's no loss. So great that he can't sustain you and me and restore completely. And David knew that. He said, he's done that for me. What a provision. You know, one of the greatest mysteries to me still in my theology is how a God that uh, we can't see and a God that we can't touch or hear audibly, how a God like that, who is real, by the way, how he can reach into the ravaged souls of human beings like you and me as we journey through life and restore them. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And some of us may say, well, you know, that's, that's, that's all good, uh, but that's unrealistic. David's describing here a utopian world, you know, lying down in green pastures, leading me beside still waters. And you say, you know, like that ain't life. That, that isn't the real world. That's not my life. That's not the real world. That's not your world, is it? And in order to answer that question, just to show that he knows, David knows what the real world is all about, how tough life is. And I'm so glad that the Bible speaks right into the real issues of life. David says, you know, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and he knows that he has to go through that. In fact, he'd been through that passage often, literally as a shepherd. He had to lead his sheep through deep ravines, through deep passages, where there's the possibility of often a violent death or an accidental death or a pestilence. And he had to walk through them. Each one of us is called to walk through them. None of us will escape life. When you think about it, that... Uh, which is dearest to you, one day you will lose inevitably. That person who is indispensable to our existence will someday be taken away from us or we will be taken away from him or her. Maybe it's our health. Maybe it's the use of our hands and our feet or our ability to move about our ability to hear, our ability to see, the powers of our mind and our memory will fade eventually and be taken away from us. And someday even our breath will even be taken away from us. David wrote these words, even though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil. That is a monument, that sentence. I'll fear no evil. In the face of the worst thing that can happen in life, that is death, the ultimate evil, he says, I will fear no evil. Why? It's because he's brave. He's courageous, he's stoical, he's resigned, and some of us are just wired up like that, and some of us aren't. Why is it that he says he fears no evil? Now, I want you to catch this. Uh, this is amazing. Remember that throughout this psalm, until now, David has been talking to you. He's been talking to me. He's been talking to us, sharing about God's provision in life, the spirit of contentment, God's restoring. And he's speaking about God's provision in his life, but here he's not talking to us anymore. Who's he talking to? He says, I will fear no evil for you. You, shepherd, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And he ends the psalm speaking to us again a little conclusion a little summary 
And he turns to you and he turns to me and he says, you know, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. He says, I've got these two companions right next to me, like bodyguards, you know, never let go of me. One of them is the goodness of God. And the other one is the loving kindness of God. The goodness of God that gives contentment, deep satisfaction, restoration, protection, guidance, all these things lift us in this psalm. And David's saying to us here today, friends, with that secret shepherd connection, I have something that nobody, nobody, and nothing, nothing in this world can ever take away from me all the days of my life. Oh, yeah? What happens when you die, David? When everything you have is taken away. And do you know what his answer is? He says, that's when I get it all. Because that's when I end my pilgrim ways. I leave the pastures and I leave the lakes and I leave the ravines and I leave the enemies far behind. And I enter forever into the safety and the beauty and the majesty of the eternal home of the great shepherd. And he says, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to remind you today, you need a shepherd. I do. Guidance for our lives. And my question is, is the good shepherd your shepherd? You know, this little psalm uh, loses all its punch without... The personal, the Lord is my shepherd. I want to ask you, is the Lord your shepherd? He can be today. The Lord is my shepherd. Father God, we just thank you for this picture this morning. When I think of the life of David, David, uh, he was a great warrior. He's a, he was a, a king, a gentle leader. He was a musician. He was so many things. But when he chose to share with us who he is in relation to you, he saw himself as a sheep and you being his shepherd loves, guides, cares, protects, restores. Thank you for all provision in our lives that comes from your hand today. Thank you for the ways in which you protect us and have protected us throughout our lives. And we thank you for the great promises that you have given us. And we thank you for these things this morning in the strong and tender and loving name of Jesus. Amen.
Jesus. Amen.